Getting better as a mountain biker can be a daunting task. Where to begin, what to practice, and how can you do it safely and easily? I think the toughest part is figuring out the right order to learn skills so that each skill builds off the most recent one you learned. Most of the advanced skills in mountain biking are just combinations of basic techniques. My goal with this channel, Super Rider, is to break down complex skills into easy to learn techniques, and we just wrapped up a 30-day skills challenge. Each day, I posted a challenge that you could practice, and I released them in the exact order that helped build up advanced skills from the most foundational elements. But because YouTube doesn't always give you what you need in the order that you need it, I pulled together everything into one video. All 30 skills and drills from the challenge are combined here so you can bookmark this video and come back to it instead of trying to hunt down each daily video like a Pokemon or whatever. If you have any questions as you progress through these 30 drills, please reach out to me in the comments or on Instagram. I'm also going to link a video below that goes into a lot more detail with all the fundamentals that you'll be using in these 30 drills. With that, have fun and don't forget, practice makes progress. Do you want to instantly improve your riding skills? Over the next 30 days, we're gonna have a daily challenge that you can practice to become a better bike rider. It doesn't matter what bike you ride, we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna start with the basics of bike handling and control and slowly build up to things like bunny hops and manuals. Each video is going to go in depth with an individual element of bike control and you'll build confidence over the month to quickly change your riding so we can start next season the right way. This whole thing is free. All you have to do is commit time to practicing a few minutes per day. Make sure you're subscribed to the Super Rider YouTube channel so you can stay locked in for the whole month of challenges. Also, we're gonna put together a video at the end with everyone's progression, so be sure to tag Super Rider TV on Instagram and show us your riding. Let's talk about a few things that we're going to need for this challenge. My goal here is to make it as easy to learn as possible, and because a lot of us are hiding out from the rain or snow right now, you can practice all of these skills in a garage, a basement, or anywhere else. Toward the end of the month, I'm gonna recommend a small obstacle, and for that you can use a curb or get your hands on a small pallet like this. You'll be amazed at how helpful this one element will become for your skills. The best thing you can do for yourself this month is to find another person to share this journey with. I find it so helpful to learn and improve at anything when I have a friend along for the ride, and I would highly recommend the same for you. We should also talk about our bike setup basics for the next month. This will apply to all 30 skills, and at its core, we just want to eliminate anything extra from our practice. My mindset whenever I'm learning anything on the bike is to strip it down to the absolute basics and then add in additional elements as we go on. You may have noticed from my other videos that I go super deep on my explanations, and that's because I'm trying to break every single element out of the skills so you can really focus on each one. My first recommendation for bike setup is to get yourself a set of flat pedals. Sometimes we need to quickly step off the bike to balance ourselves or to restart, and it's way easier to do this with flat pedals. Flat pedals are also great because you won't find yourself relying on the bike to do a particular skill. If you can do it with flat pedals, you can do it on any bike. I use DD Death Trap pedals for practice, but you can use anything you want. Most bike shops have a pile of flat pedals lying around. You might even be able to swoop some for free. Next up, try to lock out as much of your suspension as possible. The less we're bouncing around at first, the better. As you get comfortable and confident with your skills, you can open this back up, but for now, let's remove it from the equation. Your hand position is the next thing to focus on. Keep your hands as wide on the bars as you possibly can, using just one finger to cover each brake. This gives you the most control and leverage over both the brakes and the rest of the bike. Finally, make sure your seat is down and out of the way. We're gonna be moving all over the bike for the next 30 days, and we need as much room as possible so we can over-exaggerate our movements. Now that we have our bike all set and ready, we're prepared for a solid month of practice. I always say that practice makes progress, and even setting aside a few minutes per day over the next month to practice these skills will have a huge impact on your riding. We're gonna be learning skills and drills that you can continue practicing and putting to use next season, so spend the time now to dial them in, and you'll be in great shape when the weather clears up. Also, if you watch any of the videos this month and wanna dig even deeper into the skill or see another video about it, I'll be linking my existing videos into the descriptions of each one. Welcome to day one of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. Over the next 30 days, your riding is going to take a huge leap forward, and we're going to get there by making slow and steady progress to build your foundation of skills the right way. Every day, you'll get a new video with a skill to practice. The thing is, no bike skill or trick is just a single movement. They're all combinations of different, smaller elements. So over the next month, we're gonna break everything down and then build you up to an advanced level rider. 
In the same way, most of the things we'll be practicing over the course of this challenge will be drills that you can build into slowly to gain confidence. You won't really have to send it at any point. If at any point you feel like a drill is too easy or below your skill level, try to do it with an opposite stance. So if you're typically right foot forward, switch to your left foot forward and then try the drill. This will improve your overall bike balance, but it will also help you become even more confident and consistent with the technique. The first challenge we're gonna focus on is using our body to balance the bike. We're gonna ride in a straight line and see how slow we can ride without putting our foot down. The more we slow down, the more we'll need to use our body to keep our balance on the bike. Get a feel for the bike and your balance points on the bike by spreading your elbows and knees wide. As you continue to slow down, you'll feel the increased impact that your body has over the balance of the bike, and you'll need to use your body to maintain your balance. This drill is great because you're in complete control of your speed and you can ease into the drill at your own pace. Try to spend at least five minutes on this today and see how slow you can go. We'll see you back here tomorrow for the next skill challenge. Welcome to day two of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. Yesterday we put down the foundation of bike balance and learned how our body impacts the balance of the bike at slow speeds. It was an easy challenge that got progressively harder the slower we went, and for those of you who felt it was easy, you were able to modify the challenge by riding with your opposite foot forward. Today's challenge is going to throw a curve into that skill set, literally. Instead of just riding in a straight line slower and slower, we're going to start riding in a tighter and tighter circle in both directions. See how tight of a circle you can ride in without doing any sort of pivot on your front wheel. This drill builds on the balance skills that we worked on yesterday, and we're locking in how much of a role our body movement plays in the overall balance and control of the bike. So there are four different ways to challenge yourself with this drill. You can go either direction, and then you can try both directions with your opposite foot forward. Spend at least five minutes on this today, and tomorrow we're going to be working on some front wheel movement. Don't forget to tag Super Rider TV in your riding footage. We're gonna collect all the videos and put something together at the very end of this challenge. It's day three of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. We're just getting started and so far you've worked on using your body to balance the bike in a variety of different ways. The reason why we spent the first two days on using our body to balance out the bike is that we're going to be using our body even more to make the bike do what we want. Your body movement controls so much more of the bike than you'd expect and today's skill is going to prove that to you. The principle of unweighting is when we quickly move our body away from the part of the bike that we want to lift up. Most beginner riders try to yank on the handlebars to lift the front wheel off the ground, but in doing so, they end up unwittingly weighing down that front wheel with their own body weight. No wonder it feels like the wheel is stuck on the ground. To put this into context, when we want to lift our front wheel off the ground, we need to quickly pull our body weight away from the front of the bike. Our hips are effectively our center of gravity, so a successful unweight looks like our hips moving from the front of the bike to the back of the bike. Our arms help guide the process, but all the real action is happening in your hips. Now the bike has a balance point too. This section down here is called the bottom bracket, and it's where your cranks and pedals connect to the bike. Consider this sort of the halfway point of the bike, so if you want to lift the front wheel off the ground, your weight needs to be behind the bottom bracket. Today's challenge is going to be lifting our front wheel off the ground using that unweighting process. Put down a small stick or find a line on the ground and roll slowly toward it. As your front wheel gets close, take your hips from the handlebars to behind the seat and watch that front wheel come up. If you're struggling with this one, try to over-exaggerate your movement and speed it up a bit. Those two elements should help you get that front wheel off the ground. Tomorrow we'll focus on our back wheel, but until then, practice that unweighting movement. This will come in handy in a lot of different challenges this month. Day four, welcome back to the Super Rider Skills Challenge. Yesterday we got our front wheel off the ground and today the back wheel is coming up. We've been using our body to move the bike around so far and today we're gonna use our brakes to assist us. Later in this month we'll do the same skill without brakes, but when it comes to back wheel lifts, things can get complex and intimidating quickly. We're gonna start small with a skill called the endo. This is the easiest and most controlled way to lift up your back wheel off the ground and it will get us comfortable over the front wheel for some of the other skills we'll work on later. To do an endo, roll slowly along with your pedals level. When you're ready, grab the front brake and let the back wheel come up. I like to push my knees wide and my arms forward when I do the endo so my body stays mostly in the same place but the bike moves up. If you've never done an endo before, start super small and just get the feeling for tapping that front brake. After that, build up and see if you can find the maximum point of your comfort zone. You can roll into the endo a little faster to help assist, and be conscious of how your body is adapting to the movement of the bike. 
Some riders can get super steep with this skill. It just takes time to slowly chip away at that comfort zone. Tomorrow, we're gonna use this skill to learn how to roll backwards on the bike. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. That way you stay locked in for the whole month of challenges. Welcome to day five of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. Today we're gonna learn how to roll backwards on our bike. This skill comes from BMX where it's commonly known as fakie. A lot of riders see this technique and are instantly convinced that you need a special bike to do it, but it can be done on any bike. Let me explain. When the bike rolls backward, you can see the chain and the pedals rotating backward as well. As long as there's zero pressure on the pedals, the back wheel will continue to roll backward, no problem. You can test this with your bike, just stand next to it and roll it backwards. So just looking at what's happening here, the two elements that we need to exist for our bike to roll backwards are momentum and zero pedal pressure. Now, when we get on the bike, we need to create backward momentum and we also need to find a way to remove the pressure from the pedals so the bike will continue rolling. To remove pressure from the pedals, we're gonna mimic what was already happening when we were off the bike. We're gonna back pedal. This prevents the rear hub from engaging and sending us forward. Think of it like rolling in neutral in a car. You're just preventing the wheel from catching. And the longer you can prevent that, the further back you can roll. Next, we need to find a way to create backward momentum. Yesterday, we learned how to endo, and we can bring that back today to help us out. Roll slow into that endo, and as soon as your back wheel touches the ground, pull your hips to the back of the bike. Combine that movement with a quick back pedal, and you've just done your very first fakie. Make sure to tag Super Rider TV in your practice videos. I can't wait to see everyone learn this one. Remember, we're gonna combine a bunch of clips at the end of this challenge so we can see everyone's progression over the month. It's day six of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. We are locked in on foundational skills right now, and these are some of the most overlooked elements. Trust me, these are gonna come in super handy on the back half of this month's challenges, so it's worth it to put in the extra time now. A big part of this challenge is to spend the extra time working on skills like this. That way we can make faster progress when it comes to learning more complicated skills. Also, if you find any of these skills to be too easy for your current level of riding, try to do them with your opposite foot forward. It will help you lock in the skill even better and build up some extra confidence. Yesterday, we learned how to roll backwards by removing pedal pressure from the pedals. So today we're gonna learn what happens when we add pedal pressure. You can accomplish quite a bit with your body movement and pedal pressure, and getting a feel for that power that comes from it will be our focus for today. Today, our challenge is going to be rolling up to a line and slowing to an almost complete stop. Next, we're gonna ratchet our pedals back a quarter turn, and as we're pulling back the pedals, we're also gonna shift our weight to the back half of the bike, which unweights the front wheel. Now, slowly ease off your back brake and push on the pedals. If your body position is in the right place, the pedal pressure should lift your front wheel up and over that line on the ground. Play with your back brake and swap between pedal pressure and brake. You'll be easing off the brake as you're easing on the pedal pressure. For an extra challenge, see how long you can stay balanced before you have to push on the pedals. Your front wheel doesn't have to get too high on this one. We just wanna get a feel for our pedal pressure and its impact on the front wheel of the bike. Welcome back to the Super Rider Skills Challenge. You made it to the end of the first full week. This is day seven, and today we're gonna to work on a skill called wheelbase. This skill comes in handy for all sorts of techniques like drops, bunny hops, and manuals. Earlier in the week, we learned about using the principle of unweighting to lift our front wheel off the ground. We're gonna bring that back, but stretch things out a little bit. The wheelbase challenge is about keeping our front wheel off the ground for an entire bike length. So we're going to need to find some line on the ground to use as our starting point. We can roll at it with our pedals level, and then as our front wheel hits the line, we're gonna shift our hips to the back of the bike to unweight the front wheel. Try to hold your position like that until your back wheel crosses the line. Obviously, the faster you go, the less time you need to keep the front wheel off the ground, so if you wanna increase the difficulty level of today's challenge, you can slow down, or you can test yourself and see how much further past the line you can roll on that back wheel. Remember that practice makes progress, so just start this one and see how far you can roll. Use your hips to sink down on that back wheel if you have any trouble keeping the front wheel in the air. Make sure to tag Super Rider TV on your attempts. I can't wait to see how everyone does with this challenge. It's day eight of the Super Rider Skills Challenge and we're going to lock in our bike balance with a track stand challenge. The skill incorporates a handful of the challenges we've been through so far. We'll use the pedal pressure challenge and the backwards roll challenge. And if you feel like you need a complete breakdown in this skill, there's a much longer video on this channel about track stands, which I'll link below. 
The best way to get set up with a track stand is to push your front wheel into some sort of a movable obstacle. Could be a wall, a tree, or just about anything that's gonna stay put. Lock in that front brake and stand on the bike. Now take your hips from the front of the bike to the back of the bike, and while you do that, let go of the brakes and roll backwards like we did on day five of the challenge. You don't need to roll too far, just a few inches. Next, push on your pedals to return your front wheel to where you started. You've just completed the basic elements of the track stand. Practice this back and forth for a while until you get comfortable rolling back and then using your pedal pressure to push you back in place. The next thing to do is to grab your front brake before the front wheel gets back to the obstacle. Instead of relying on the obstacle, we can use our front brake to stop the wheel and then back pedal from there. Now you're completely independent and you can track stand anywhere. Today's challenge is to complete a 30 second track stand, but I also want to see who can do it the longest. Let us know in the comments how long you went for. Welcome to day nine of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. We're gonna learn a special skill today that will help you lift up the back wheel on any bike that you're riding. You don't need special pedals or anything else to get the job done. It works with every bike. The technique we're gonna to learn today is called the pedal scoop. This is a motion that we do with our pedals and it's the secret sauce to getting that back wheel off the ground. I normally focus my attention on my back foot, but you should do the same motion with both feet for consistency. The pedal scoop motion goes like this. We tip our toes down toward the ground and then we push back and up on the pedals. This motion forces the back wheel to redirect upward and the forward momentum of the bike makes it so the pedals will stick to your feet as you do it. The one thing that we also need to do during the pedal scoop which will help your back wheel lift off the ground is keep our body weight forward. Just like when we unweighted the front wheel by leaning back behind the bottom bracket of the bike, we need to do the same thing again, just leaning our weight ahead of the bottom bracket this time. So we've unweighted the back wheel by leaning forward and then we're using the pedal scoop to pop it off the ground. Today's challenge is to do five pedal scoops in a row. Just roll slow, no brakes, and pop the back wheel up as you roll. You made it to day 10 in our 30 day super rider skills challenge. The foundation is forming and in the next few days things are going to start ramping up a bit more. I hope you've had enough time to feel confident with everything we've been working on the past 10 days. These skills might have felt easy or obvious, but I guarantee you'll be glad that you spent time focusing on them. Today we're going to take the pedal scoop technique that we learned yesterday and we're going to apply it to unweighting the back wheel even higher. On day three of the challenge we worked on the endo which lifted our back wheel using the brakes. So today we're going to go back to that same motion but without using our brakes. The purpose of today's challenge is to get you comfortable combining the pedal scoop with a bigger unweighting motion over the front wheel. This is going to come in super handy when you want to ride up and onto larger obstacles. Getting comfortable throwing your hips into the bars is also going to be useful for bunny hops and will help us get more height. Let's start small with this process and begin with the pedal scoop pops like we did yesterday. Slowly work your height up higher and higher until you feel like you're at the top of your comfort zone. The more you practice this motion, the further you'll be able to push that comfort zone and that's going to help us out big time. It's day 12 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. You should have a good feeling of control over the bike and hopefully your confidence is growing a bit as well. Today we're gonna work on lifting our front wheel off the ground and we're gonna move it from side to side. This skill comes in handy whenever we wanna redirect our bike on the trail. We can quickly lift our front wheel and point it in another direction. We're gonna use a combination of unweighting and bike balance, two skills we've spent quite a bit of time so far practicing this month. So how do we get this wheel to move? Ride slow to a stop and then grab your back brake to hold the bike in place. Lean your body back, unweight the front wheel, and then open up your knee away from the bike in the direction that you want to go. You can try to add in your shoulders as well. Practice moving it in both directions and just start super small with it. Think about using your front wheel placement to balance yourself side to side. If you start swapping in one direction, use your front wheel to balance yourself back out. Today's drill is called pendulum. And it's another way to use a line on the ground to practice wheel placement. Line up parallel with the line, grab your back brake, and then lift the front wheel up and over the line. If you want to take it to another level, try the clocks drill, where you hold the back brake and hop your front wheel in a complete circle. You can go both directions with this one. I think it's easier than it looks after you get the basics of the pendulum drill figured out. 
Welcome to day 13 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. Yesterday we learned how to lift and move our front wheel and today we're going to follow it up by moving our back wheel around. At this point you've learned the basics of lifting your back wheel off the ground using the pedal scoop movement and also the endo. These two skills are going to come in handy today to get the back wheel up and we're just going to add in a little twist to get the wheel moving side to side. We typically call it a pivot anytime we rotate on one of our wheels and whatever wheel is still on the ground is what we call it. So even though our back wheel is the one moving, it's a front wheel pivot since our front wheel is twisting on the ground. Yesterday would have been a back wheel pivot since our back wheel was staying on the ground. Sort of confusing, I guess. I didn't really think about it until just now. Anyway, back to the pivot. There are two things that will get the back wheel moving sideways. Twisting the front wheel in the opposite direction that we want our wheel to go and using our back foot to gently push the bike in that direction. So if you want your back wheel to rotate to the right, you're going to twist your front wheel to the left. This is exactly why I teach track stands with your front wheel facing away from your front foot. It sets you up for the easiest direction to begin practicing your front wheel pivots. In order to do your first ever pivot, I want you to roll slow like you're going to do a basic endo. Right as you're about to grab that front brake, give your front wheel just a little twist. This tips the bike and initiates the motion, and then all we need to do is guide the back wheel with our back foot. Just try to get an inch or two of movement here. Don't go huge right away. After you get the basics locked in, you can twist the front wheel a little bit more to get more momentum. The higher you lift your back wheel in the air, the more time that wheel will have to travel farther. So today our challenge will be to get the back wheel to move just a little bit. We'll go bigger in the next few days, but the biggest hurdle for you will likely be getting over the fear of twisting your front wheel as you go into the endo. If you're feeling comfortable with the movement, Maybe test out the pendulum drill with your back wheel. Move it back and forth over a line and see how that goes. Practice makes progress. Day 14 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. We're a day away from the halfway point. How crazy is that? We're starting to move the bike around a bit more and today we're gonna push it a little bit. On day 12, you learned how to move your front wheel using the pendulum drill. I also gave you a little preview of the clocks drill and today we're gonna come back to that drill. To do clocks, we grab our back brake and move our front wheel around in a complete circle. You can do this in both directions too. When we're doing this drill, a fun thing to do is see just how far you can pivot in one shot. You have to really over-exaggerate your movements to get it to move far, and you have to open your knee in the direction you want it to go. The challenge for today is to see how many front wheel lifts it takes you to get around the full circle. Comment below how many it took you, and I'll do the same. You made it to the halfway point of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. 15 days in and we're making solid progress. Maybe there are a few things that will take a little bit longer to dial in, but we're making forward progress nonetheless. I'll be surprised if everyone gets all 30 of the skills locked in immediately, but hopefully this challenge is a good exercise to help you find the areas where you feel like you might need more focus. This channel is definitely here to support your growth as a rider. Everything we're teaching in this challenge has a longer form video that breaks it down further. Okay, so yesterday we tried to do some big pivots moving our front wheel around. Today is going to be all about swinging that back wheel around. We're going to do the same drill, clocks, just with our front brake locked this time. Remember that we'll use our endo and pedal scoop technique to get that back wheel moving off the ground. Previously, we rolled into the endo to get this started, but today I want to see if you can do two pivots in a row, initiating that back wheel lift from a standstill and using the back wheel placement as a way to rebalance yourself. You may have practiced the pendulum drill with your back wheel already, which would be a great primer for the clocks drill. Lock in your front brake and get your weight way over the handlebars, and let's see if you can get the back wheel to pivot all the way around in a circle. Let me know how many pivots it took you to get the full 360 in the comments. This one is definitely a bigger challenge, so if you're struggling with it, check the description below and you'll see a longer video that breaks this one down in detail. We're going to switch things up tomorrow, so if today was tough, not to worry. Day 16 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. You're rocking it. Oh, actually, we're rocking it today. That's the skill we're going to focus on, rocking. Since you can lift up the front wheel and the back wheel, I'm going to teach you a way to put the two together to stay balanced in place with this technique. Sometimes when we're riding uneven terrain, it's not reasonable to do a track stand. Or sometimes we need to readjust our wheels on the ground to keep our balance. Rocking is a great way to get this done. The easiest way to get into rocking is to roll into an endo. As our back wheel comes back down, we lean back and let the front wheel come up. Then we rock back onto the front wheel and so on. 
We'll start kind of big with this motion, but the more controlled we get, the smaller we can go with it until you're at the point where your wheels barely leave the ground. Today's challenge is to rock back and forth without leaving the ground. Turn this into a super efficient movement and you'll realize that your control over both the front and back wheels has come a very long way over the past two weeks. Welcome to day 17 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. Yesterday we rocked back and forth and today we're going to apply that skill to the side. Same idea here, this will help us increase our balance and control over both wheels. We're going to rock to the right and then to the left. You should eventually be able to do this indefinitely, and it should feel like a low energy way to maintain your balance on the bike. This is the skill that you want if you ever want to play a game of bike with anyone where people are trying to run into you and knock you down. If you can rock side to side, you're basically unbeatable. Today's challenge is to take that side to side motion and completely master it, and then see if you can put everything together and rock in a complete circle like this. Day 18 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge, I guess you could say things are getting pretty serious. We've learned so much in the past two and a half weeks, and today we're going to try to put a few things together. We learned a skill earlier in this challenge called the pedal scoop, which is what lifts our back wheel off the ground. Today we're going to put the pedal scoop to work in a technique called the English bunny hop. This is a different version of the bunny hop, but it probably looks familiar if you've ever seen someone with clipless pedals try to jump their bike. We're going to use it in a few different ways over the next week, but I want to teach you how to do it the right way with flat pedals. Roll along slow and crouch into the center of the bike. I like to think of my body as a spring, so in that crouching motion, I'm sort of preloading the springs. Once I'm there, I bounce my body straight up and use my elbows and knees to pull the bike off the ground. The back wheel comes off the ground because we're using that pedal scoop motion when we bend our knees. We don't need to get any sort of height here, I just want both tires to come off the ground. Make sure you're right in the center of the bike for this. If you're too far back, the back wheel is going to stay on the ground. Really dive into the bike and bend your elbows and knees before you pop up. Today's challenge is to get both tires off the ground and to feel comfortable landing again. Once you have the basics in place, try to go as slow as you possibly can with this movement. It gets harder the slower you go. Welcome to day 19 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. Hopefully your English hops from yesterday are feeling good. We're going to take those English hops and repurpose them now. They're the basic building block for hopping in place to keep our balance when we're at a standstill. At the end of the challenge yesterday, I suggested that you should try to go slower and slower with the hop. Now let's try to ride to a stop and try to get a single hop from a standstill. See how that feels and try again, but do two hops in a row in that same spot. Today's challenge will be to get 10 hops in a row without moving from your spot. One tip that will help you a lot with this challenge is to think about the hop as a way to rebalance yourself. So if you tip in one direction or another, hop your bike back underneath your balance point. Also another tip, the more efficient you can get with your hops, the less chance you'll have of throwing yourself off balance. So try to make these hops as tidy as you possibly can. If you're getting the 10 hops in one spot without any trouble, try to do 10 hops forward, 10 hops back, 10 hops left, and then 10 hops to the right. It's going to come in handy tomorrow. One last thing, if you're on an e-bike for today's challenge, sorry. <laughs> Day 20 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. You are officially two thirds of your way through the challenge and we're nearing the home stretch. I'm so proud of you for sticking with this and I hope you've learned a few things along the way. Today's challenge is called the X. Make an X on the floor with some tape about two to three feet long. We're going to attack this shape in every possible way that we can think, using our English hops to start. And if you want to practice your pivots, you can do that too. I like to hop down the first line, then turn 90 degrees and hop back and forth. You can sort of freestyle with this thing a bit and just focus on keeping your wheels in each one of the quadrants. You can do just about anything with this X on the ground, and that's what's so great about it. This is going to be our last wheel placement drill. The next 10 videos are going to be focused on using a pallet to ride onto and off of obstacles. We'll also get into bunny hops and manuals toward the end. I mentioned this at the beginning, so if you have that pallet or any small obstacle handy, we'll begin using it tomorrow. If you don't have any obstacles available, not to worry, I'll teach a version of the challenge without it as well. Welcome to the home stretch of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. Day 21. Up until now, we've been working on flat ground skills, and today we're going to add in a small obstacle. I have a pallet here with me, but you could also do these same skills on a curb. If you don't have access to anything to ride onto, 
I suggest finding a line or a small stick of some sort to practice your timing. Ultimately, that's what this drill is about dialing in the timing with the front wheel lift. Because we're focused on our timing of the front wheel, we need to focus our attention on the takeoff and specifically the distance that we take off away from the obstacle. Since everything we ride has varying heights, my best suggestion is to try to lift your wheel off the ground the same distance away from the obstacle as its height. Today's challenge is to conquer your first small obstacle using the unweighting method. If you have more than one pallet handy, feel free to stack them up and go for two. Practice the flat ground skill first, and once you're feeling confident, try and approach onto your obstacle. I would recommend starting small, that way you can just continue rolling up onto the obstacle once your front wheel clears it. Small stuff like pallets or curbs will be easy to conquer with both wheels, but when it gets slightly taller, we have to push the handlebars forward a bit more. If you have any trouble getting your back wheel up, make sure to maintain your pedal pressure. That will help your back wheel do its job to keep rolling. Welcome to day 22 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. Yesterday, we used a rolling unweight technique to lift the front wheel, and today, we're gonna use a completely different technique to get the job done. Earlier in the challenge, we did a pedal pressure drill where we put our body weight to the back of the bike and pushed about a quarter turn on the cranks to lift up the front wheel. We're gonna use that same technique to get our front wheel onto the obstacle today. This is a great slow speed skill to have during tricky sections of the trail where you need to lift up your wheel up and over something. Start again by practicing your flat ground drill and then bring it to the obstacle. Pay attention to your speed here and start slower than you think you need to go. If you go too fast, the pedal pressure may not have as much power and impact and you could bump the front wheel into the obstacle. Today's challenge is to get both tires up onto an obstacle using the pedal pressure method. If you've got an extra pallet, try the same skill on a slightly taller obstacle and see how it goes. It's day 23 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge, and we're gonna continue building on the skill that we practiced yesterday. We spent time riding up and onto an obstacle, and now we're gonna ride off of it. In the very beginning of the Skills Challenge, we found out that riding in a straight line was harder than we thought when we slowed it down. Today, we're gonna to ride off an obstacle as slow as we possibly can. At this point, you've expanded your comfort zone over your front wheel, so practicing this on an even larger obstacle could be really interesting. But one of the biggest things that I find when I'm practicing foundational skills is that I can group together a bunch of different skills at once. So instead of just riding up and onto a pallet and blasting off it, I can group this second balance practice and get two for the price of one. Bring back what we practiced the first time around on flat ground. Use your body to balance the bike out at slow speed and creep down off the obstacle as slow as you possibly can. I like to do this on staircases when I'm out riding in my neighborhood. It's a great way to practice balance, but at a different angle. If you've got something like that around you, definitely test this out. Remember, the slower you go, the harder it is, and that's what helps us improve. Welcome to day 24 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. This is the beginning of the final week of the challenge and I can't believe it. I hope you've made progress over this month and if there's something specific you've improved at, please let me know in the comments. This series was a ton of work to organize, but I know everyone out there has been putting in work too. So hopefully you're seeing the results to match. Today's skill is one of my favorites. We're gonna use the front wheel pivot to move our back wheel onto our pallet. Earlier in the challenge, we worked on these on flat ground, and today we get to apply it to an obstacle. It's the exact same process as the flat ground pivot. The only difference is that you have to unweight your front wheel to get it onto the obstacle, and then you go into the endo. Once you get the basics locked in, it's one of the easier ways to bring your back wheel up onto an obstacle when you're riding. The best way to start with the pivot up is to come in almost parallel to the obstacle. Cut that angle super close so you're nearly parallel, that way you don't have to swing the back wheel too far. It's more of an endo than a pivot, at least to start. Eventually you'll feel a lot more comfortable with a bigger angle, but just start small. Remember the basics of the endo and how we unweight the back wheel by getting our body forward on the bike. Use your pedal scoop to help bring that back wheel up and you'll be surprised how easy this goes once you put it all together. If you wanna take it up a notch, try a slightly larger pivot or a larger obstacle. The only difference is that you'll need to over-exaggerate your moves a bit more. 
It's day 25 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge, and today we're gonna do some precision work with our front wheel. The benefit of having an obstacle like a pallet is that we can utilize the shape in multiple ways. Normally, you just ride up and over the pallet this way, but if you turn it to the side, now you have a skinny line to ride. Today's challenge is gonna be riding up and over the pallet using only this one skinny board. Build confidence putting your wheel right on target and roll over the pallet with both wheels in line. I actually have a little balance beam in my warehouse that I use for balance line practice. And on for longer balance lines, I like to look far ahead of my front tire to stay balanced. If I stare straight down at my front tire, there's a better chance that I'll get sketchy and fall off. Make your body wide, elbows and knees out. That will also help you stay balanced on these skinny lines. Another way to practice this is in parking lots on the lines there. Much lower consequence, but just as difficult. Welcome to day 26 of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. We're gonna work on the basics of dropping off obstacles today, and we'll use the unweighting technique to do it. Earlier in the challenge, we did a drill called wheelbase, where we lifted the front wheel up and rolled a full bike length. We're gonna come right back to that today and use it to roll off of an obstacle. Let's first start with a quick practice of the wheelbase drill. Roll slow and shift your body weight to the back to unweight the front wheel. Bend your knees slightly to hold that front wheel up and coast on your back wheel until you cross the line. To set up your first drop, we're going to apply the same exact movement. You'll time the front wheel lift with the edge of the pallet and then coast on the back wheel until it clears the drop. Pallets can be a little challenging sometimes depending on how far apart the slats are, but curbs are usually pretty good for this. In either case, give it a try on this relatively low consequence drop and get a feeling for the movement. This is how drops are done at much higher levels too. It's just a matter of building confidence with the movement. Also, there's no real bonus for doing this high up unless you're competing in Red Bull Rampage, so keep it chill and stay focused on mastering the skill at lower heights before you ever consider doing this anywhere else. I have a few videos on the channel that go a little bit more in depth as well. I'll link them below. We're gonna learn the basics of bunny hops today. The best part is that over the course of this skill challenge, you've already mastered all the individual techniques, so now we just have to put them together. Here's the formula. Number one, unweight the front wheel to lift it off the ground. Number two, pull your bars to your hips as you're rolling on the back wheel. Number three, pedal scoop the back wheel to lift the back wheel off the ground. Number four, continue to pedal scoop by bending your knees, then push your handlebars away from yourself to even out the bike in midair. Number five, land smooth and immediately subscribe to the Super Rider YouTube channel. <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, I know that's a lot to throw down at once, but the front wheel lift and wheelbase drills we've been doing are great at preparing the first half of the technique. You know how to pedal scoop to lift the back wheel up, so just start by getting that rolling. Front wheel up, then pedal scoop. Let's start on flat ground with a nice slow roll to get everything going. A lot of first time bunny hoppers drop their front wheel too soon during the pedal scoop and that's why we bend the knees and try to push the bike away from us. It's almost like a rowing motion with the handlebars during this process and that's what evens out both tires in the air. Don't bother with any obstacles or high jump bars or anything at this point. Let's just get some clean hops that can build our confidence. Practice makes progress and there's a lot going on in this technique and you just need to put in the time to get it right. Today's challenge is to throw down one good flat ground bunny hop that you're happy with. I'll link my full bunny hop tutorial below as well. That has a lot more detail in it. Welcome to day 28. We're in the home stretch of the Super Rider Skills Challenge. Today we're gonna to take the bunny hop technique we learned yesterday and apply it to a small obstacle. If you're not feeling confident after yesterday's challenge, stay focused on building up the flat ground technique. If you're feeling ready to move on to an obstacle, let's focus on our timing. Almost every other video out there makes you use a high jump bar and I feel like no one actually jumps over bars in real life. It's always up and onto something and that's why my bunny hop video on this channel is slightly different from all the other ones. Today we're gonna do a bit of the same. We're gonna drag a pallet out onto the floor and bunny hop onto it. Honestly, it's more about having something to focus our timing on than anything else. You should be able to get your front wheel over the height of this pallet no matter what. So even if you tag your back wheel or the bunny hop isn't perfect, you'll roll over it. Don't focus on jumping onto the pallet, just focus on jumping in time for the pallet, if that makes any sense. In today's challenge, we're gonna roll slow at this pallet and just gently lift our front wheel for the bunny hop before we get to the pallet. It's all about timing. If you do that part right and execute a proper bunny hop, 
you'll land on the pallet and roll away smooth. It will, however, teach you a lot about timing. You'll also notice that the faster you ride at the pallet, the quicker you have to execute the technique. The slower you go, the more pronounced you'll have to make your movements. Play around with different speeds. It's good to have a mental catalog of this for future bunny hops. It's day 29, and today we're gonna build on to another drill that we did previously, the wheelbase drill. As a quick refresher, wheelbase is when we do a rolling unweight of the front wheel and roll on our back wheel for the length of our bike. It came in handy for a variety of different challenges so far, and today we're gonna see how far we can push it. This drill is also the foundation for the manual, which aside from the bunny hop is one of the most popular skills that riders want to learn. It's a wheelie without pedaling, so you need to have perfect control over your back wheel balance point while you maintain momentum. Today's challenge is a drill called Wheelbase Plus. This is where we go two full bike lengths on our back wheel. It forces you to really use your body to keep the bike balanced as you roll along. Again, the faster you go, the easier it will be, but the slower you go, the better control you'll learn over the skill. Make your body wide and use your knees, hips, and elbow to keep balanced on the bike. This one is challenging because you have to go front and back and side to side with your balance. See if you can get two full bike lengths today, and if you go longer, even better. We made it, day 30 of the 30 day super rider skills challenge. Thank you for joining me on this challenge. I hope it's been worth your time and that you've seen meaningful improvements in your riding or at the very least that you've identified areas that could use some more attention. I put a lot of thought into this series to make sure there wasn't a giant leap in difficulty at any point. So hopefully we didn't lose anyone along the way. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, it would mean a lot to me to have you stick around for the year ahead. Just like you, I'm always improving and I've got some really cool stuff in store for this channel in the upcoming year. Also, I do a weekly newsletter with my favorite bike videos and stuff. There's a link in the description for that if you wanna join us there too. Okay, let's wrap up this challenge strong. We've learned so much this past month and today I wanna end with a proper manual. Yesterday we got two bike links, but today I wanna see how far you can go. It's the same technique as yesterday, but just see how long you can hold on a proper manual. Maybe try to get a little extra speed so you can drop into it with slightly more momentum. Comment below and let us know how long you went. Thank you again for sticking with this challenge for the past 30 days. It means a lot that you trusted me as a coach to help improve your riding. I hope we get to ride together at some point, and until then, don't forget, practice makes progress.